Now, another way to attack a fireman. So we've got loose collar tie, inside control, we have a little bit tighter situation from, for example, when we were pummeling, and he has an underhook on me, and I'm retreating, I'm trying to push him away. Naturally, I'm retreating now, he's pushing in. I continue that attack in that same direction. Alternatively, from a two-on-one situation, there's a good possibility for getting a fireman's carry. Remember, our fireman's carry, I want to keep up as high as I can. I want to be pushing in here. Now, remember, we've got a lot of different kind of attacks we can do here. If Colby is more upright, that's not, I'm not thinking fireman's from here. I'm going to be thinking single, for example. I'm going to be thinking grabbing around the body. I'm not going to be thinking of fireman, so if he's really upright. If Colby, on the other hand, is pushing into me, now if he pushes into me, he can't push into me effectively if he stays uh, perfectly upright. He's got to get at an angle. Remember, I can push best, not when I'm like this, but when I'm at an angle with my body. I push best like this. I can't push Colby as good that way. So, if I'm pushing into him and he's pushing back, notice now I've got a little bit more space, and that's setting up a more favorable situation. It's crucial that I have my head inside. If Colby defends and has his head inside, watch. I can't, I'm not going to be able to get my head underneath very effectively. And he's going to be probably quite proficient at being able to defend against that attack. So it's crucial that I start with my head inside. Now, you'll notice how high I am here and how deep I am here. This is crucial. I want to keep this grip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push into Colby. I might bump him hard. Okay, and if he's pushing in, from here what I can do is I rotate my hips. Now, naturally, notice where my hips are. And in fact, my, my right foot here is forward. This is indeed a more uh, uh, a lengthy kind of move. It requires a more, more gross movement. It's a, the longer move, it takes more time. Typically, too, what I want to do to make it a little shorter is, as I'm pushing in, I'll try to tug him around in front. Or if Colby, for example, tries to come out in front by grabbing here, grabbing my elbow, that also, now notice that just changed the angle so I can come into this position here and throw. So those are some situations where you can use this two-on-one. I'll review these a couple more times, but I want you to understand that this is also an excellent position to get a fireman's carry from. Notice that time I didn't grab the leg, I just kept the arm. I can let go of the arm with the one arm and I can uh, grab the leg and throw and I'll demonstrate that as well. So, if Colby stays in this position, this is a little harder for me because I really have a big, a big rotation here. So what I'm going to typically do is first push into him to get him to push into me. If I'm start noticing he's starting to come out in front, that sets up the position fairly favorable for me. Notice where my head is. If he blocks with his head, it's a no-go here for me. I've got to think about doing something else. Okay, I may try throwing from here. There's things I can do, things will be going over but the fireman's carry isn't going to be there. So I'm in tight here, I push. As soon as I notice he starts coming out in front, that's my opportunity. Now watch how I almost, I'm going to duck my head under here and I'm going to get it under this side. So we'll turn around here. So from here, I push in here, Kobe comes out in front, I'm going to come to this position here. Notice how I'm cranking on the wrist here. I'm not letting this turn this way, I'm cranking on it this way as I throw. I can continue the throw, or I can transition and grab the leg. That's personal preference. Again, even when I grab the leg, this is mostly an arm throw. It's a call the fireman's carry, but this isn't where most of the motion or most of the power or most of the technique is. Most of it's how you secure the arm and the shoulder. Notice, too, if Colby sees I'm going to do a fireman's and as he's coming around in front, he starts lowering his level so I can't get underneath and starts lowering his hips, I'm not going to be able to do a fireman's carry. At that point, I can be thinking of some other things from here, like drag. Okay, we talked about the drag before. So if he's backing away or too low, again, we got to learn to go from one thing to the other. This is primarily about throws, but as we go along, I want to kind of tease your brain a little bit and have you understand that there's sort of an ebb and a tide to things such that you need to be able to switch back and forth from the thing you're trying 
And if that's not going to work right away, you need to have plan B set up there. And that's how all your moves are. It should be like a little program. You're going to go to this direction. You're either going to get it or not. If you don't, you go this direction and do this technique. Your technique should be pretty branching like that. I'm in here. Colby pushes into me. If he's too low, okay, if he's too low here, okay, for example, take him down to the mat. If I do that a time or two, he's not going to be so low next time. He's going to be up a little bit higher. And that's going to allow me perhaps to get in. Okay? So again, you kind of work things back and forth between high attacks and low attacks between throws and leg attacks, or throws and drags, legs, uh, leg attacks and drags. As another example, if I have a good two-on-one here, if Colby knows I'm continuing to attack that fireman's because he knows I like the fireman's or because I just tried it a couple times, either in practice or in competition, he may pull that leg back. What are some of the things we do? Remember, in an earlier instructional, from this position, it's very easy to bring the guy down. Okay, I can bring him down straight, or I can pull the arm out and down. Out from its axis and down, or I can just keep it straight down in a line that's, uh, th that goes along the axis of his arm. If I do that, he's, he's defended against my fireman's by pulling this back. If I try that and he defends against that, the fireman's is open. Again, part of wrestling is learning how things go back and forth and being able to respond effectively to that and quickly. Another uh, fireman's uh, type uh, situation is called an inside fireman's carry. I get this technique from a drag. Now notice, the first two firemen's when Colby was pushing into me or retreating, I went from inside to outside. Okay, my head went from inside to through his midline to outside. This is different. I'm going to come now from outside to inside, although my body is going to end up in a roughly similar situation, okay, in terms of being underneath him, perpendicular from where he's standing, and also to keep his body over mine as in a fulcrum situation with my butt up off my heel so that I have some height, not being down here. What am I going to do? I'm going to set this up with the drag. Remember our drag situation? We're working here, hand control. From here, I'm going to drag high. Now watch, I, as I drag this this way, my head's going to come through here. Now, I can grab here, or I can just pop here. Doesn't matter, I can grab here, or pop here, and then I'm going to roll. Just roll through, or throw through. Again, the motion is this way. Not like this, not going forward, I'm going this way, okay, along the side of my body, from shoulder to shoulder. Step one is the drag, and don't think drag, come in, lock down, throw. You may want to, you know, the first couple times sort of step yourself through it, but it's all got to be one move, just like the fireman's carry, or the other two fireman's carry that I showed are. It's all one continuous movement. So I'm going to push into him here. Maybe pop his head. He comes up. And I throw it. My preference actually is not to grab the leg because I think it's quicker to come through. And again, my belief or my philosophy in terms of fireman's carry is it's really an arm throw. And if you secure the shoulder, however you got the shoulder, whether it's from that grip, a drag, a two-on-one, that's what's important. Okay, not so much the leg. I'm controlling the hip with my shoulder. That's important. My shoulder is in that socket, okay, it's in the socket right here, but I'm not lifting up with my arm. That's not where the power is coming from. That's not where the technique is coming from. People that are inexperienced have a tendency to try to jack the person's hips up with their arms. There's a tendency when they do that too to get more space between them and their opponent, whereas if I'm concentrating more on this, I tend to keep tighter. Again, I'll do it slow but continuously. I might be moving around here. I may pop the head here. He comes up, I drag, I come through, and I throw. Okay, again, I want to come down here as we did before, head in. When he turns in, get around the side body when he turns away.
Another technique that I think is a good technique, somewhat similar to a fireman's carry. It's not a fireman's carry, but I'm putting it here because the motion is, is somewhat similar. It also comes from a two-on-one situation that a Soviet did uh, back in, in the mid-80s and was really successful with this technique. But he'd be pushing into you here, keeping tight, and if he felt some push power back, one of the techniques he'd do is he would step out in front, block the heel, tug on the arm, and put his head on the chest, and get pretty much right in front of his opponent right here. And Kobe's going to support me as I do this, and we'll, I'll talk through it a little bit more. So from here, I'm pushing in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block, and I'm going to step. Okay, so from here, from this position here. Now I'm going to come down even more than that. I'm going to come down to where, support me, Kobe. Right. I'm going to come down to about this position right here. I want to keep this tight. I'm going to be on my heel. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be tugging on the arm and pushing on the head, and I'm going to continue it through all of my motion. Support me again. Right. I push in. Opening in a step and block here from this position here. Notice the angle. My body is sweeping around here. Notice, too, my head is going to come in high to his chest here. From here, and I'm going to continue coming through. I keep heavy on that arm. It's all one continuous movement. It's kind of hard to do slow, actually. It's all one movement. So I push in here. Colby pushes back. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to step through, pushing my head in. Let me tell you what I'm not doing. And what if you do when you're practicing this, you'll get yourself in a lot of danger. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to be arching or, or, or pushing my back. Uh, I'm not raising my belly to the ceiling. So I don't want to do this. Colby's going to end up on top of me. When I come through, from here, I want you to notice I'm on this foot here. This is out blocking. Notice I'm kind of crunching forward. And from here, I'm going to tug on the arm, push my head. I'm tugging the arm this way. The shoulder's coming down. I'm pushing the other shoulder up with my head. One shoulder's going up because I'm pushing into his chest. The other's coming down. And because I spun around, I've already got some momentum going in that way. I'm blocking his heel with my foot, tugging on his arm. So he's got a lot of weight on this leg that he can't retreat or move it. And I'm just going to continue the motion. It's crucial that I'm not coming back. You can see the angle. I'm not, I'm not coming back like that. When I come in through here, notice I'm coming forward. I'm going to crank this way. I'm not bailing out towards my back. You can set that up now, sometimes a little push so that they push back into you. And then when they push back into you, part of my motion here is, is like that. I mean, I'm stepping through, but my shoulder motion, I'm really trying to get this going here. So I'm trying to get them going like this with this grip. So as I duck, as I duck under, I'm kind of, I'm trying to make a small circle there with this arm. Remember, in all of these type of fireman's type throws and techniques, when I do bring Colby, you can just go down to the mat, on your back. After we come down, it's crucial whether I've come from the two on one, or whether I've thrown through on the fireman's, I want to clamp down on his shoulder. I want to keep my head into his chest, not into his belly, into his chest or into his head up high, you know, preferably more at the very top part of his chest here. So that when he turns in, I can block. And I'm not blocking by just pushing my head and being loose here so he can pull this out. Pull this out? Yeah, kind of pull it out so you can yeah, get by. Yeah. I keep this tight. From here to here, I sandwich his bicep, upper part of his bicep here. So there's a lot of weight here on this arm. Okay? 
from here, I'm going to sandwich this here to here, and I block. So I'm not leaving space here, so pushing here, he's got space to come out. This clamps down, okay, and the head pushes in. So when he pushes into me, I'm blocking him from coming in on this side. I'm also blocking him from pulling his arm through this way to be able to hip heist out. Conversely now, eventually he's going to turn the other way, and what I'm really going to do then is I mostly emphasize just sagging on this arm. So if I sag on it tight, there's no way he could turn all the way over. If I'm loose, he might be able to sneak his head out. But as long as I'm tight, and by tight, I'm not picking it up, I'm sandwiching down here. And again, one of the things in wrestling is we learn to utilize our weight, and especially me being small, I've had to learn to utilize my weight effectively. So while I'm talking, I'm kind of resting on my hip. But after I throw, I'd be more in a position here where you could slide a piece of paper under here, and it's not going to be under my butt, because most of the weight is here. I've got a little bit of weight on this foot, teeny tad of weight on the outside, lateral aspect of this foot, and I've got nothing here. The rest of my weight is here. Okay, so part of learning how to wrestle is learning how to keep your weight on your opponent. There's very few times where I want my weight way out here, even though, for the most part, demonstrating that that's where it is. And that's kind of, I think, an important point in wrestling that's crucial, I think, particularly for jiu-jitsu people to get a, a sense of, in terms of being able to smash down. We're going to talk more about that on a future DVD, where I go over top position, cranking, pinning, and such, to give you that philosophy. Jiu-Jitsu is really good, it seems to me, in terms of sort of a, a give and take and a flow of movement back and forth. Wrestling, on the other hand, I think has something really valuable to contribute in terms of more of a smash down, anaconda, tightening up, crunching kind of positions that I think complement the give and the take of, of Jiu-Jitsu and the, that flow very well. And we'll be going over more of that. But those are the positions you need once you get a person down to be able to finish it. Naturally, you know, if you hold them here, it's no great uh, problem. It should be incredibly easy to get to the side here or from here. Kind of push into me, Colby. He pushes in here. It shouldn't be that difficult to mount your opponent. So and my goal isn't to teach you a lot of what to do from there with your jiu-jitsu, but just for you to point out these positions in wrestling are very applicable and they'll allow you to do the things you do best in jiu-jitsu or submission type wrestling. And again, in terms of talking about applicability um, with wrestling and, and how that might uh, meld with uh, jiu-jitsu or submission wrestling, I like this a lot from the bottom. If we're, if we're in a position here and I've got kind of a butterfly guard, if I can get this position, this is an unbelievably easy sweep to get because even though I've not blocked very good here with this leg, he's got nothing at all blocking here and it's not that hard to bring him over, even if he's posting on that leg. Likewise, or similarly rather, if I'm in this position here, and I can get out here, if I block here, I'm going to get to this side. If he tries coming over my head, come over my head, okay. That Korneliev, or that uh, Korneliev is the, Sergei Korneliev is the, the Soviet that used to do that type of technique. That is something I think that's very effective and very applicable in jiu-jitsu on the bottom. That whole two-on-one, I think, frankly, is very, very applicable on the bottom. If we're in here, fighting in here, and I can get to this position here, this is not hard at all to, to sweep. I can grab here, I can grab to this position, and I can also post here. I can pop this out or just pinch here. And as long as I bring him over this shoulder, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweep him. If I bring him laterally, put, put, post your leg out. No problem for him to post out. But if I bring him in this direction here, he's got no post as long as it's in that direction. If I go laterally or perpendicular, he might be able to put a post out. But he can't put his foot way up by his head. I'll go over some more things like this in a different instructional, but just to get you thinking at this point, about the notion that a lot of the stuff, even on your feet, does have some applicability to what you can do on the mat. And similarly, a lot of these wrestling type of movements can have some applicability to jiu-jitsu, I think, or submission style wrestling.